However, if 90s man chooses not to buy a Mondeo, there are any number of high-tech sophisticates waiting for a slice of his check. When the new Mondeo first hit the scene, everyone was saying, oh, no, it has vegan sat levels of build quality. Come as it does. And it's not far off. The fact that you can expect 28 to the gallon in combined driving, and you can take yourself, your family, and all your kids with you for the hair-raising journey. Well, 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 if it isn't the new Ford Mondeo. A handsome looking beast, but brand new. No, this is what upsets me. The Americans had this one. Hi guys and welcome back to Car Focused. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Ford Mondeo. Now the Ford Mondeo is 28 years old now, believe it or not, it's been around for a long time and we've heard the news recently the Ford are gonna be discontinuing this car as of 2022. So sadly, it's not gonna make its 30th birthday. So I thought in this video, why not test out the latest and final offering and just basically give it a bit of a send off and talk about the history of the car and yeah, just say our farewells. Anyway guys, enough of me sitting in this random chair, let's cut to the intro. So the Ford Mondeo has been around since 1993, that's 28 years, that is a long time. And I'm pretty sure that if I say to any of you guys, give me a memory of a Ford Mondeo, I'm pretty sure all of you are gonna have one, whether that be your grandparents owning one, your parents owning one, yourself owning one as a workhorse to chuck the family in the back, being in a taxi on the way back from a night out, being in the back of a police car maybe after you've been a bit naughty and you've gone in the back of a police Mondeo. But you get what I'm trying to say here, loads of people have memories of these cars. Now we're currently on the fifth generation, we've had the Mark 1, 2, 3, 4, all been very popular cars, but as time has gone on, the sales of the Mondeo have just fallen. And this is due to a number of things, but mainly people kind of go into the German market, switching over to SUVs. And I think people that want a big car like this, they tend to just see the likes of Audi and BMW as a better option and almost turn their nose up at the Ford. So it's basically been struggling to survive and ultimately next year, the car is gonna be cold. So moving through the years from 1993 all the way to 2021, this brings us on to this current generation Mondeo and the last one we're gonna see on the roads, which is the Mark V. Now it's been around for quite a while. It's had a couple of little tweaks here and there. And we've got this ST line edition model, which is kind of the sportiest looking Mondeo. And I personally think it's a beautiful looking car. Um, I always prefer the estates and it's the same in this, this scenario here. The Mondeo estate looks really nice. It's got some lovely 19 inch alloy wheels. We've got red brake calipers just a sportier looking front bumper with a sort of little splitter here, some nice gloss black uh, grill there. Yeah, it's just a really good looking car. It's just a bit of a shame that what's under the bonnet doesn't quite match the exterior because it looks quite aggressive from the front and you'd kind of expect it to be quite punchy. But this version here is a hybrid. So we've got a two litre petrol engine under the bonnet and we've got a hybrid motor at the back, which you lose quite a bit of boot space due to that. And it basically switches between the two when you're driving. Now it's quite a strange experience because this has got a weird CVT automatic gearbox. So I can only describe it as similar to a leaf blower. So when you accelerate, the car doesn't go through the gears. It's kind of one solid rev range and the car will kind of take off. And it's just a really weird experience. So we'll talk more about the engine and the gearbox and the way the car drives and how it's a bit odd when we actually get out in the car and take it for a spin. But at the side of the car here, you can see the nice, long, sleek profile that the car's got. You can see that it's a big car. This car really is ideal for somebody that's got a family, you know, a couple of kids, maybe some dogs, and you want to take long road trips, put luggage in the back, and just have space to do everything comfortably. It's just a pleasant drive. It's got a big boot, although this one is slightly compromised. So I think we'll go around to the back of the car now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So moving to the rear of the car, starting from the top, we've got a color-coded shark fin aerial. We've got quite a big spoiler here, unique to the ST line. Again, color-coded, you get this on the estate version. LED rear tail lights with a chrome strip. We obviously know this is a hybrid. We've got the hybrid badge there just to remind you. And then moving down, rear parking sensors, which is pretty much standard on all cars these days. A nice gloss black diffuser. This kind of adds to the ST line sporty look. 
And then surrounding the exhaust pipe tips, we've got this little chrome strip here. Now it's not the true size of the tip of the exhaust, but there are exhaust tips in either side of these. So they are, they're not fake, but they're not kind of fully genuine. Opening up the boot. Now this is something that kind of confuses me because when you buy in one day of estate, you want to kind of capitalize on all of the room that you can get. Now with this being a hybrid system, we've got all the electrical gubbins underneath the floor. So what they've had to do is they've had to raise up the boot floor which sacrifices some of the room. So in a normal one day estate, you get 755 liters of room in the back with the seats up. But in this, you get 633. So you lose over 100 liters of space and you might not think that's a lot, but when you're putting stuff in here like suitcases, prams and that kind of thing, you do really notice a difference. I had my son's pram in here and it was, it was quite high up and it made it difficult to shut this slider here. So I think if I was gonna buy this car, I'd probably just go for the normal two litre diesel and gain the extra space in the boot. Cabin space. So sitting in the back here, I was pretty amazed just how much space you've got in here. Now this seat is set for my height, I'm five foot eight, and I've got plenty of knee room here, more than enough. So if you're kind of like a six foot plus, the seat's gonna be back here. You're still gonna have enough knee room. Plenty of headroom here as you can see and just the general kind of width of the car as well you just get a feeling of being in a really spacious cabin now this particular model it's quite dark we've got a black roof lining we've got black door cards black seats with the tinted windows as well so it is quite dark in here but in general i could see myself sitting in, sitting in here for a long journey and being pretty happy pretty comfortable we've got ventilation in the back there's no control on um, the climate in the back here unfortunately also got a centre armrest, two coffee cups, so if there's two of you in here, you've both got a coffee, plonk it in there, somewhere to rest your arm. Just very comfy. We can pull these seats down. And obviously it increases the boot space. I think you get about 1600 litres or something crazy. But with both of these down, you've got a huge area in here to load uh, suitcases and various possessions. So we'll have a quick look in the front. Right, so the driver's cabin. The seats in the front here are noticeably comfier than they are in the rear. Really nice and soft, quite supportive. I've done quite a few miles in this car now and I must say I didn't have any complaints, no back pain or anything like that. It was a very comfortable journey. It's quite nicely finished in here. The quality is pretty good. I mean, this is a fairly expensive car. It's sort of 28,000, um, so you do expect a bit of quality. Steering wheel feels lovely, nice and soft leather touch. You've got kind of brushed carbon strips along the side here, along the front here. Piano black edging. It's also got a memory um, seat system, so you've got three positions, which will remember the seating positions for those individual settings. All the mod cons that you'd expect in a car of this age, of this price band. So you've got this Ford Sync system, the latest one with sat nav. You've got your dual climate control, heated front seats. And at the front here, you've got quite a cool trip computer, which will show you your kind of your electric um, motor range, your fuel consumption, all those kind of things. And then on the other side of the speedometer, you've got another digital screen um, for sat nav, radio and phone and that kind of thing. Obviously it's an automatic, so you've got your automatic um, gearbox controller here. There's no manual paddle mode or anything like that because of the automatic gearbox that it has. Two massive cup holders. I did find a bit of a problem. If you buy a small coffee, it's a bit too big for your small coffee, so you need to buy a large one, but it swallows up these very nicely. In the center here, we've got loads of room. So you've got this little compartment here, and then if you flip that up, there's a huge space to put more goodies in there. USB port as well. USB port down here, and a massive space to store your phone and your wallet and various bits and bobs in the middle here. Nicely sized glove box with two shelves. And then in the door bins, again, very big, very good for storing bottles of water and that kind of thing. So yeah, guys, inside this car, very nice place to be, very comfortable. And on a, lo on a long journey, I don't think you're gonna have too many complaints. So guys, inside the Mondeo Hybrid, the ST-Line Edition, what's it like to drive? What's this engine and gearbox combo like to drive? Well, let's discuss that now. So we're at, a, we're at a standstill. The engine is on, well, the car is on, but the engine isn't running. We're on purely electric mode at the moment. And if you pull off, 
the car will remain in electric mode just using the electric motors up until you get up to about 20 miles an hour and then the engine will kick in you can get a bit more speed out of that if you're if you're very light on the throttle apologize with this road it's a tight little road here i'm gonna to have to keep pulling over yeah if you're very light on the throttle you can get a bit more speed out of the electric motors but on average about sort of 20 30 miles an hour you will run purely on electricity now when the petrol motor kicks in this is where the driving experience becomes quite strange because of this cvt gearbox that we've got it's basically a continuous power band but the engine revs remain the same so it's kind of like when you driving a moped or like a tractor or something and you accelerate the revs go up to a certain point they remain there but the the speed of the vehicle will keep on increasing so i'll demonstrate this to you in a minute when we get around this corner it's just if you're used to driving a traditional automatic gearbox or a manual gearbox it's just a very weird sensation that you have to kind of get over so we'll accelerate now so i don't know if you can hear that the car actually picks up pace quite quickly it's 187 ps it is quite nippy but it's just it's just weird you've got to really pin the throttle as well to get all of the speed out of this car if you're light on the throttle it tries to be as efficient as possible and it doesn't go all that quickly also the throttle response is a bit strange there's quite a lag in kind of putting your foot down and the car actually reacting so that's something you've got to take into account if you're nipping out into little spaces or you want to quickly build speed you've got to really stamp on the throttle and expect there to be a delay but yeah once you get over that and you start to get a feel for what this car is about it actually becomes a really pleasurable car to drive it's kind of like a no thrills experience it's not the sort of car you want to drive if you're after a really engaging fun car to kind of chuck around and have a bit of fun with it's not about that this car is purely about efficiency economy and comfort really and also practicality even though you do lose a bit of boot space in the back as we touched upon earlier so I've done a couple of long journeys in this with my, my son and my wife. My wife said it was really comfortable, very spacious in the back. The seats are really comfortable as we touched upon earlier on. And it's just a nice place to be for a long journey. And for me really, this car achieves everything that it sets out to achieve. And it's just a shame that more people aren't buying it uh, and that it's no longer gonna be with us from 2022. It is a real shame because it just does everything well. It does everything you want it to. You can get all the luggage in. You can go to where you want to go in comfort. It's got just enough speed. You've got the diesel option as well with the normal eight speed automatic. If you don't want to go through this kind of strange sensation with a CVT and the hybrid. And there are many options as well. The top spec cars, Vignales, they're just so kitted out. They've pretty much got everything you can imagine in them. So yeah, I just, I don't know why more people aren't buying them. But would I buy the hybrid? No, I probably wouldn't buy the hybrid. As I said, I'd probably buy the diesel, but fuel efficiency wise, this averages about 35 miles to the gallon, but you've got to also take into account the work the electric motor does. So you will get more miles to a tank than what you would in a normal two litre petrol because you've got the motor there taking over the strain of some of the work. So yeah, guys, to drive this car, it's pleasant. Once you kind of get a feel for it, I don't really have any complaints other than those I've raised with the, the throttle response and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's a nice car to drive. So guys, that's it. My time with the Mondeo ST line edition is over. It's time to summarize. The car as a whole, I really like. Um, I think it's a really good package in terms of styling, tech, comfort. The only thing that I don't like about this version is quite a big thing actually, is, is the hybridness of it. So the engine in the gearbox and the fact it's a hybrid. I personally think the better option is to go for the two litre diesel, maybe with the eight speed automatic and maybe with a four wheel drive as well. And I think then you'd have kind of more of a complete package. But if you're looking for something that gets you A to B comfortably, fairly efficiently, doesn't cost you the earth to run, then the hybrid, you know, it's, it's, it's a good option. But looking at this car now, it's kind of sad to think that it's the end of an era. 
over the next 10 years or so, you're gonna see less and less of these on the road. So if you wanna pick up one now, then do so. You can get these like a year or two old and they're sort of down below 20,000 pounds. So you can get some really good deals out there. But yeah, guys, look at this Mondeo while you can, because as of next year, it's gonna be no more. Yeah, pretty sad. But anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and tell me your stories about the Mondeo, like how you've experienced one of these. Let me know in the comments box below. But until the next one, guys, as always, take care and I shall see you soon.